And then finally, the actual like pedestal secured to the cockpit sole. I think we can say done. That's amazing. <laughs> so let's just uh, clean up that hardware and pop it back in and call it good. <sighs> Feels good. Okay, so check it out. Got much more room down here now. So I got those fuel hoses out. Got them out from up here. So <clears throat> this is where, so that's the old vent line right here. And this is the old fill. Uh, everything's dry in here, which is great. <clears throat> um, so eventually those will be pulled out and then glassed over and filled and fared and um, painted. But right now, that's a little out of scope of today. Plus it's really cold, it's kind of cold and wet. Um, and yeah, rainy in January <laughs> in Portland, so to be expected. Uh, but what I did notice is um, some of those wires that are hanging down, those are on the list to be pulled out. So uh, that's kind of fun. I like doing that. So I'm gonna give a few minutes to do that and then the other thing I haven't quite figured out yet is because we put this fish line, let me see if I can show you. Ugh. Because we put this, yeah, there you go. Kind of up there in that top corner, top left. Kind of hard to see up there. Right up here. So see our fish line coming out of those holes? Well, hold on. <laughs> ah, dusty. So because that fish line's coming out of those holes, it kind of uh, gets in the way of my sanding with my Dremel and uh, filling, or if not filling it, but just uh, sealing the edges with epoxy. So that's kind of... Uh, I don't want to take the fish line out. Let's see, what can I do? I'll probably just sand around it, and then epoxy around it. Maybe kind of tape it up out of the way so it's, yeah, let's just do that. At least we'll get some epoxy in there. It won't be perfect, but it's better than nothing. Better than it was. And you know what we like to say. <laughs> make the boat just a little bit better today so um yeah so let's work on getting those old wires pulled out because that's satisfying and then yeah we'll continue what we originally set out to do okay check it out look at all this fun stuff we can clean up so all of these can be pulled out plus there's a a bit of speaker wire here too. So all of those can be pulled out and trashed. So that's some type of, I don't even know, coax or, I don't even know. It kind of looks like, yeah, it's welding cable. Gross, get that off the boat. Welding cable. These were from some type of old outdated electronic. Um, but before you do any wire pulling, make sure your ends are nice and small <laughs> so like this one let's just nip the tip snip the tip same with this like don't even try to bother straightening that out because it's going to go in the trash so boom snip the tip so now <clears throat> when we pull these out those tips won't be in the way told you it's satisfying <laughs> All right, let's go see what we can pull out of the other side.
Okay, so some of the wiring we pulled out was related to the SSB system. So, uh, um, this is, I had to snip it, but that basically hooks into your, the radio receiver. And this is an automatic antenna tuner. And what's interesting is they still make these. So, um, like new retail was like 500 bucks. So, I, um, we probably will have SSB on the boat. I haven't made that final decision yet. Um, and we'll talk to Devin and we'll discuss pros and cons, but, um, I think what we'll do is just hang on to this unit until we make the decision because they still make them. So, uh, if it works, it's worth keeping. Um, and I can assume that it works. I don't know. We'll see. But, um, what we're not going to do is keep the cable. <laughs> so if you look at the, it's just the sheath here is just cracking when you bend it. So it just is really, really roached. You can, you can hear it crack when you twist it and turn it. <laughs> so I just snipped it off and uh, we'll snip off the end. I'll label it for what it is so I remember because, yeah, I, I have to write things down or I forget them. So, yeah, we'll save that and then check out our other booty that we got. All of these we were able to pull out. So that's really satisfying. I mean, obviously, and obviously this, and then obviously the diesel fill and vent pipe too. So, yeah, overall, um, didn't plan on doing this today <laughs> but as it was boat work like you start doing one thing and then that another thing's in the way or you notice it or it'd be easier to do something else so anyways it's a process and we'll get there um, but yeah I'm gonna get these wires kind of tidied up and in the trash label my automatic antenna tuner and kind of see what else we can do. We'll go from there. So I wanted to show you guys some detail on my uh, rotary tool set up for the, the sanding I'm about to do. <laughs> so this case here, I think it's one of Devin's old like makeup cases. <laughs> um, and I have my little, little rotary kit in here. Um, so the tool itself is just the t standard Milwaukee 12 volt rotary, rotary tool. I uh, keep a battery in here and then um, let's see spare bits and bobs over here earplugs just so they're handy just keep a little stash of earplugs in there so I remember to use them um, a little spare like tool kit so these come with the tools um, and there's various mandrels and things that I keep in there too my uh, flush cutting with the depth setting on it and just a cheapy accessory kit from Harbor Freight. So I haven't even used most of what's in here, but 
Um, various discs, various wheels, very, various flappers, some polishing stuff. Um, and then this side is like various grinders and polishers and bits and things like that. So that's, this is, <laughs> I've been working off of this for a couple years now. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to show you the, like how I keep myself organized. Um, the, the original Milwaukee, like, I guess Chuck that went here, uh, failed on me. So I went and bought a, a Dremel quick change. So this quick change is really easy. So you don't even really need a tool. You just pop in what you're wanting to work with for the day, hold your button so it doesn't spin and then crank it down. These, it does tend to spin in here. It can't get like completely tight. So you can use your wrench and uh, get it, snug it up a little bit more. But yeah, that's, that's ready to go. So, um, you know how, how I like my tools and I like showing you guys stuff and the right tool for the job really helps get things done faster and easier and, and we'll, we'll, let's go do one right now in real time and you'll see how, how fast it actually can go. Okay, I lied. I won't be able to show you the real time uh, because <clears throat> it's just there's no room for the camera. <laughs> so apologies for that. But, um, trust me, the right tool for the job gets the job done. Be right back. So, so far, whew, sorry, so far successful, yeah. Um, so this was the first weekend where we aren't full-time on the boat. So we've got the apartment, had the couch, right? <laughs> and um, so we're off the boat full-time and in project mode on the boat. So look, I can just leave some tools out, leave some cabinets open, leave that stuff just piled on there. Don't have and today's Sunday, so I don't have to worry about putting all that away to do the weekday tomorrow. So it's kind of nice. Ain't gonna lie, that's a big benefit. Being able to rip apart the boat without having to put it back together again immediately. Anyway, yeah. So feels good. Uh, we're about done for today, and I gotta go help Devin out with a couple things. And yeah, I think we we did a good job today. We got the a lot of the wiring out, with those old fuel hoses out. Um, started sanding where we're gonna epoxy. Um, yeah, so we did what we could, uh, but we can say can't definitely can say the boat is just a little bit better today. All right, guys. See ya. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's a very rainy day outside. <laughs> but here I am on Yara, gonna do some boat work. Devin is at home with friends and family. Um, but we gotta keep this project moving forward. I wish I could be there with her and them, but we've got a boat <laughs> and it takes time. So the, uh, yeah, I still have a sanding to do. So I want to grind out or sand out the holes that the conduit passes through, then come back and uh, layer in some epoxy. So uh, cleaning will come after I'm done sanding. So, <laughs> oh, glorious, glorious sanding, as Mads would say. So that's the plan for at least right now. Um, I'll give you guys an update as we keep going. Let's get to it. All right, <clears throat> so this stuff has been remarkable. Clean Warrior all-purpose cleaner and degreaser. Made in USA. So we just picked this up from a pet supply store 
and it's fantastic. I don't, I don't know the clean warrior.com. There we go. So yeah, I'm going to show you how fantastic it is. And this is without any like pre prep or anything. All I did was vacuum under there, under there. So dilute it because it's really freaking expensive. This one bottle was like $35, 32 ounces. But it's gone a long ways and it works really, really well. So it's so far it's worth it. So again, I'm a fan of showing you all tips and tricks and tools of the trade of this of this boat work trade. I mean again we bought it at a pet store, so it's not even a boat material, but it says it's biodegradable. You can actually wash your hands with it. Um, so I'm just gonna spray it on and we'll show you the magic. Let's get you set up right here. So look how gross that whole cabinetry is. So that whole cabinet is basically under the nav desk here. So dilute it in a sprayer of your choice. Let that work its magic and just sit there for a little bit. Pretty good. Not perfect. 40 year old boat, but way better, way, way better. <laughs> you guys don't want to watch me scrub, but um, yeah, just thought I'd show you that stuff. Clean Warrior, clean with a K, K L E E N, if you like it. I'm not promoting it. They didn't pay us for this video or anything. Uh, just something that we uh, found that's useful. I'll get this cleaned up and put you guys on hold. All right, <clears throat> check it out. Setting myself up for some epoxy. So, um, give you a status update. <clears throat> that has been so wherever the conduit comes through a bulkhead i'm going i i sanded it down with my dremel we talked about that with the dremel tool then uh came back cleaned vacuumed uh acetoned and now i'm setting myself up to do some epoxy work um so I can epoxy the raw exposed wood where the conduit went through the bulkhead. I mean, it's been like that for 40 years. It's original to the boat, um, but can't hurt to just epoxy it. So there's no issues whatsoever. Um, I wanted to show you, uh, I don't know, kind of, I don't think this is my idea, but I did it just now. So the chippy brushes, just these cheap like dollar store, $2 brushes, whatever. Um, for this type of work, <clears throat> I just use them and toss them. So what I'm, what I did was I cut this one with some scissors to this point. And that way, uh, my theory is <laughs> when I have this point, I can kind of get in the epoxy into the hole a little bit better and kind of, you know, I don't know, get in there a little bit better. Better than this one that's flat and big and maybe I'd have to try to use the corner of the brush. We'll see. Uh, we'll give an update on how this one works. So my next step is to get things taped off because with unthickened epoxy, it's really, it, it can be viscous and uh, the kind of leak 
uh, down and around into places that I don't really want it to go. So I'm going to tape things off and then um, mix up the epoxy and, and get it get it applied. I do have it warming, so there it is, <laughs> my two, my A and B on the, the little oil heater there. It's like 48 degrees outside and 65 in here, so having it on the heater will help mix things up a little easier. So yeah, there's our update. It feels good to make some progress. All right, got those holes epoxied. Um, and instead of using the, the little cut brush that I showed you guys, I just had a, a glo I had gloves on <laughs> and I just dipped my fingers in the epoxy with gloves on and then just went around the inside of the hole with my, my fingers <laughs> and that was way easier. So, oh well, next time. Uh, okay. So we did the best we could given the circumstances. Um, I put the epoxy on, but it's not drying very fast. It's pretty cold, kind of wet, damp, uh, humid. So I'm not gonna wait around here and wait for it to dry. <laughs> uh, it's like watching paint dry, right? But anyway, um, so I'm gonna head home and go be with friends and family. And then next time when we get back out here, hopefully, I mean, well, by then the epoxy will be dry. So um, yeah, then I can finally get going on the conduit. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, so we'll call it a day. It was a good almost four and a half hours. So yeah, good day's work. And we certainly made the boat just a little bit better today. See ya.